we've got another guest lined up here for you. So we're going to get right to him. I see he is up. I want to welcome to the program president of New York Republicans Club, Gavin Wax. Gavin, welcome back to the program. Thank you guys for having me. Always. So, you know, we've got a museum of history. We've got a Smithsonian Museum of History in New York defining whiteness. Now, I, I, I'm confused at this, Gavin, so maybe you can help our audience out here. It talked about hard work, individualism, things that are I, I consider good. Uh, let's put this tweet up here from Bry Byron York uh, uh, of this deal. And, and Byron says, the National Museum of African American History and Culture wants to make you aware of certain signs of whiteness, individualism, hard work, objectivity, the nuclear family, progress, respect for authority, delayed gratification. Uh, Gavin, I, do, do you find anything wrong with that? I find so much wrong with it. I don't even know where to begin. I mean, first off, uh, let's start with their, you know, this blatant anti-white racism, uh, just attacking whites for having any sort of values, whatever it is. That's the first point. The second point is accusing anyone uh, who isn't white of not holding these views, which we all can agree are objectively uh, good views to hold, uh, having a, a, a faith in the nuclear family, uh, being hardworking, uh, loving your country, being productive, whatever it is, these are all objectively good traits and values. And it is absolutely ridiculous that they could claim that these only apply to white people. These are American values. These are the values that made this country great. We should all be proud of them. We should all share them. And denigrating one group uh, and then applying this racism of low standards to another is the height of a liberal hypocrisy that's that's ongoing right now. And I also want to remind everyone that this is on the taxpayer dollar uh, that this kind of crap is being put out there. So I'm glad it's getting called out. And it's absolutely ridiculous that we're allowing this sort of thing uh, to spread. It's very interesting. You're right. This is on the taxpayer dollar. And I want to read to you a statement. Is this some sort of a psychological beatdown? Is this some attempt to get white people to go hide in the corner? Because it, there's a statement that says, facing your whiteness is hard and can result in feelings of guilt, sadness, confusion, defensiveness, or fear. Fear. I mean, this is like, you know, someone telling me, well, how do you feel about your brown eyes? Do you feel like just complete dirt that you ended up with brown eyes? You can't control what the color of your skin is. Why should you feel these things? Are they trying to convince us to feel these things? It's it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if, if you replaced white with any other uh, race or ethnic group or even religious group and tried to use the same type of poster, uh, there would be national outrage. It'd be on every uh, mainstream media network. They would be accusing you of a whole slew of things. But for some reason, uh, when it does say white, uh, then they get a pass and they get tax money to help fund this and promote it. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this this is hurting race relations. This is hurting minority communities. This is instilling horrible values that you have to be the opposite of these values to actually be uh, someone who's a real black person or a real brown person or real Asian or whatever it is. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's the it's the most insidious form of racism because it comes in the form of, oh, we're fighting racism. But it's, it's completely phony. It's hypocritical. And it is destroying this country. It is this type of uh, mind set that is really uh, leading to a lot of the the issues we're seeing today with all these riots and looting and violence so Gavin uh, speaking of destroying the country I'm gonna shift gears here because Alexandria Casio Cortez they're in New York she says that uh, you know unemployment in these minority groups are leading to the violence that we're seeing I want you to take a listen to what she had to say about you know shoplifting bread so why is this uptick in crime happening? Well, let's think about it. Do we think this has to do with the fact that there's record unemployment in the United States right now? The fact that people are at a level of economic desperation that we have not seen since the Great Recession? Maybe this has to do with the fact that people aren't paying their rent and are scared to pay their rent. And so they go out and they need to feed their child and they don't have money, so you, maybe have to, they're put in a position where they feel like they either need to shoplift some bread or go hungry that night. So Gavin, I, I have to ask you, isn't it the Democrat policies that are putting these people in the position of the very thing she's actually speaking to? Yeah, it's, it's a great irony that uh, she talks about, you know, shortages of bread. The only times in history we've seen such a thing 
have been under Marxist and socialist uh, run regimes. Uh, but I guess that kind of goes over her head and she doesn't see uh, the irony in them making that statement. But this is absolutely ridiculous. There are a lot of problems going on, uh, but the wave of crime has nothing to do with shortages of bread. The wave of crime has to do with that we've made our police impotent in New York City. We've tied our cops' hands. We've uh, basically destroyed cops from doing their, prevented cops from doing their job. And we go after them if they do do their job. And this has created an environment uh, where there are no repercussions for your actions. So you can engage in lawlessness, you can engage in criminality, and you can get away with it. Because even if you are arrested, you'll be out with a desk appearance ticket in a few hours, and these corrupt district attorneys uh, won't even prosecute you. Uh, so it's a complete uh, breakdown of law and order. It's a complete breakdown of the justice system. And who gets hurt the most by these ridiculous uh, pro-crime policies? It's not these uh, blasé upper middle class liberals living on the Upper West Side. It's actually the people in AOC's district. It's these outer borough uh, working class uh, uh, minority communities uh, who are uh, suffering under gangs, who are suffering under this wave of crime, who have their neighborhoods being looted, the stores they, they frequent being destroyed, uh, who can't even walk in the park without their children being shot at. I mean, we saw this poor uh, poor boy in Brooklyn get shot dead, uh, one years old. I mean, it's ridiculous. And and every day there's a new story. So she she's really rich to go out there and try to claim that this is about uh, the economic, solely about economics when it is about much more than that. And if anything, it is her policies, the Democrat policies that have run New York and the inner cities that have impoverished these communities and maintained a uh, cycle, a cyclical nature of poverty. So if there's anyone to blame, it's her and her own party. I want to remind our audience something about AOC. She claims to be the person of the people that has lived among them. Now, when she was an, old, an adult and she was bartending, life was a little different. She did not live there as a child. She did not struggle as a child. She actually lived in an affluent suburb that didn't even have to have its own police department. It shared a police department. But this is what she told New Yorkers would happen if police were removed because she, she wants police completely removed. So I want you to listen to what she told New Yorkers New York would look like if police were removed. Here it is. People ask me what does a world where we defund the police, where you know defunding police looks like, I tell them it looks like a suburb. Because in Yorktown Heights and in um, and in a lot of these communities in Westchester, what is the most important thing that is like political, like politically the most important thing that the world revolves around? It's school funding. Now, we have about two and a half minutes left. Do you think that New York looks like Yorktown Heights if you take away the police? Is this an accurate statement to be telling her constituents? No, it's a complete fabrication. The The notion that there are no pol there's not a police presence in the suburbs is actually ridiculous. Uh, one, New York is, you know, it's a dense urban environment. And uh, we have, you know, crime stats through CompStat and other, uh, other statistical um, initiatives within the police departments that place uh, police in areas and communities where crime is highest. And it just so happens that crime does tend to be high in inner city, lower, uh, lower income neighborhoods. So that's where you're going to see a higher presence of police. But that's the exact thing you want. You want to stop that criminality because people want to be able to grow their communities. They want to see their communities prosper. So they could look like, you know, the neighborhood she grew up in, Yorktown Heights, uh, you know, but you can't get to that place if there are no police. You can't get to that place where law and order has been completely eroded and destroyed. So she She's completely uh, misconstruing everything that 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 makes sense and, and, and what's accurate in terms of policing in New York and, and, and every major city for that matter. Uh, and, you know, you said it right that she comes from privilege. She comes from an upper middle class background and she's a complete phony in how she portrays herself. And she is trying to uh, destroy the communities that she represents through these backwards policies based on ignorance and a lack of understanding. Gavin, I would say, I would even venture to say she is putting her own people in danger with these crazy statements, and she doesn't seem to care. Gavin Wax, president of the New York Republicans Club, thank you so much for being on today.